here. We are doing our next episode of Shirley Talk TV. We have Miss Holly here. We're going to do an interview with her. Just a little bit about her cancer journey, um, how she found out, things like that. So make sure you all watch until the end. She has an amazing story to tell, and we are so glad that you all get to hear it with us. So, Miss Holly, thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, very casual conversation here. Just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself um, and then how you found out you had cancer. Okay. Well, I have a, a little bit of history, unfortunately, with cancer. And the first time that I was diagnosed, I was 17. And I had a very aggressive type of breast cancer that um, I had developed kind of a, just a knot. And I had been to see doctors and I had um, very irregular monthly cycles and they kind of all passed it off as well, you're developing or growing. And so my mom finally took me to a surgeon and he cut it out and a couple of days later he called back and said that it was cancer. And um, so things moved very quickly from then because it was a very aggressive type of um, breast cancer and I ended up having to have a bone marrow transplant. Um, at that time, they were doing autologous transplants where they take your own bone marrow out, filter it, freeze it, um, give you basically lethal doses of chemo and then reintroduce your bone marrow back into your body. So that was my first round um, with cancer. I was very young and just didn't understand a lot. Um, but I also had my daughter very young. I had just had a little baby girl right before that and I think she kind of helped keep me, to keep me going. Um, financially, after that was over, I ended up filing bankruptcy because I just couldn't afford to pay those bills at that time. I mean, I had a bone marrow transplant on top of everything else, which was very expensive. So I was young enough then that I could file bankruptcy and kind of rebuild my credit and start over. So um, I guess by the time I was 21, I was, um, you know, I had healed completely and ready to start life. So things went well for about 10 years, and then I had another mass that was found, and this time um, on my ovaries. And so everything, all the blood tests would say, would indicate that I had cancer again. So they ended up taking that mass out. Unfortunately, I didn't have to have any chemo then. They um, just removed it, and that's all we had to do. So that was a huge blessing then. So then fast forward 10 years later, and on my 39th birthday, I said that I was going to get in the best shape of my life for my 40th birthday. That was my gift to myself. <laughs> and I worked out every day for a year and, you know, ate spot on, um, was very into my nutrition and on my 40th birthday. I believe I probably was in the best shape of my life. And then a few months after that, um, probably my birthday was in January, and I think it was in March, I was diagnosed with colorectal cancer. Oh. And I, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, after all of that work, um, to just find out that you have cancer again was devastating. Three um, times. Three different areas. Three times, three different areas. I've had genetics testing, and there was no conclusive results indicating that it was hereditary. So you can't pass it to your daughter? Can't pass it on, She's which a was a huge blessing when I found sure. that out. I was actually happy. She said, I'm sorry, I can't give you any kind of information. And I was like, don't be sorry. Yeah. That's a That's blessing. That's news you could have gotten. So... Um, Oh, colorectal cancer. <laughs> Let's how, you, see. how did you find out for that one? I mean, um, for that, that, I had um, I had two different weekends where something really strange happened. But I was babysitting my granddaughter and thought, I, 
it's just a fluke. I had gone to the bathroom and um, had a lot of blood. But I also thought I had been a little bit sick and throwing up, so I thought maybe I've torn something, and I'll just pass it off as that. But then I went to work on Monday, and it happened again. And I actually told my boss, I said, I think I'm going to have to go to the hospital. And he said, why? And I was you know, a little bit embarrassed to tell him. I said, well, I think I'm bleeding out internally. And he was like, you need to go. Yeah. So from there, things moved very fast again. Um, all my doctors were on it. And they um, originally told me there was an 87% cure rate. And I thought, that, good. that's no problem. I've done this before. I can do this. And so I went through, I can't remember how many treatments or months, but went through a couple of months of chemo and radiation every day. And um, we thought it was gone. Very easy, quick and easy. Um, then a few months later, I went back to the surgeon and they indicated that it was back. And he at that time told me I would need to have a um, colostomy, just have surgery, remove it all, and there wouldn't be a chance that I wouldn't end up with a colostomy. And I thought, well, it's not really, what I want to do. <laughs> so um, just wanted to make sure I exhausted all my efforts. And my mom had heard about Dr. Chesney at UofL. He was doing um, kind of some trials with immunotherapy. And I went um, to Brown and he said, um, you know, that we could do that. And so I started a full year of Devo, which was a new kind of immunotherapy. It was supposed to be not a lot of side effects. Yes. And you do this for a year and we'll see where we are. No promises, really. So um, the first couple of months went okay, but then I started developing severe side effects and ended up um, with a uh, extreme adrenal fatigue, which um, I didn't realize how it was how important that was to your body. Mm -hmm. So now I take um, steroids every day, and I will for the rest of my life, just because your body can't live without that hormone. So I've, from just the Opdevo treatment, caused heart failure, adrenal fatigue, um, issues with my endocrine and thyroid system and I also was having a lot of leg pain and they couldn't figure out you know what was causing that we kind of just said maybe it was side effects and come to find out the steroids that I was taking for the adrenal fatigue had caused a vascular necrosis which cuts the blood supply off to your hips or bones whatever bone it might be and then they die. So I ended up having um, both of my hips replaced this summer. So it's just been, I was diagnosed in 2016 and for a cancer that was supposed to be, you know, a couple of months, an 87% cure rate. I've now been almost five years trying to, one, get rid of it and just survive financially because it's hard. It's it's hard to financially keep yourself alive when you're a cancer patient. Well, we say it all the time. You have cancer and you're doing all these things, but these companies don't care. You know, they don't care that you have to have chemo every week or they don't care that, you know, you still have a family to provide for. They want their bills paid, you know. Right. So all that stuff keeps going um, and that's why... We do what we do to try and take some of that off of your back. Um, let me back you up just for a second. So your immunotherapy, did insurance cover that? Since it was in the They didn't stage? cover it, but I was actually able to get it covered by Bristol Myers. Oh, so awesome. that was a huge blessing. Yeah. It's um, I'm actually one of the lucky ones because I have an employer who um, – is in a position to be able to make decisions about his employees where a lot of people work for corporations that don't really have control. But my boss is the president and I have 
probably been at home more than I've been at work the last four years. And I have a blanket and a pillow and a yoga mat in my office and I can lay down and That's amazing. my You're paycheck just... comes every Friday. Yeah. So, but that doesn't happen for most no, people. We were actually talking about this earlier this week about how many of these employers need to see other employers and see what they're doing to help you out. Because like you said, most of these corporations, all you are is a member. Yeah. And a lot of times if you're going through these things, they don't have your job ready for you when you come back. So Even if your you. boss cares, they may not be in a position right. to help you. And it's expensive. I have good insurance. I have a great employer. My paycheck came every Friday without fail. But for five years now, every year, I incur seven to $10,000 in medical bills, but I don't have the money to pay, so it just carries over every year when that new deductible starts. So any money that I would have for home repairs or vacations have all went to pay medical bills, and they're still not paid. That's terrible. It just makes you think, you know, what, I mean, what happens to some of these people? Just, what happens is they get sick yeah. and they lose their job mm -hmm. and they have to go on disability if they can get disability. Yeah. And a lot of times that doesn't even cover, you know, I have to have a lot of medical supplies. I have a colostomy now for the rest of my life and those supplies aren't free, no. you know, and um, disability just doesn't cover everything. That you need. Mm -mm. No, it so really isn't much at all. it just puts you in a really bad position. So when you see people that are living on the streets or asking for money, they didn't make a choice mm -hmm. to be there. That's Sometimes true. life just happens to you. I agree. Um, I actually heard of Holly back um, earlier this year, actually earlier this summer, back in June. Most of you all know our amazing sponsor, Wright Mechanical. They are our heating and air guys. Um, that's actually how I heard about her and her story. They helped her out. You want to talk a little bit about that and kind of how? I, yes, <laughs> I definitely do. So um, I've probably given way too much history oh, here, great. but over the course of four years, I um, just had a lot of weight and baggage and things that kept piling up and it got to a point where I would go to work, but I would come home and fall on my bed with my clothes on and go back to sleep until it was time to go to work the next day. And um, uh, things just got behind. And the week that my AC went out, I had just paid a large medical bill because I had um, collectors are very aggressive and so I had paid that and that was the same time that um, my hip had went out. So my AC is out, I'm having issues, I can't breathe because of the medication that I'm on, it's hot and I go online and just post a message to my friends and family. I said, look, I'm just struggling. I just need a little help. And um, it's very humbling to, to have to do that. But when I did, it's, I started praying and my friends started praying and it was just like all of heaven opened up. My friends and family sent me um, about $5,000 over the course of 48 hours. And my niece Isabel had tagged me in a post that Mike saw. And Mike talked to Scott and Scott showed up on my doorstep. The, I think it was the same, it was the next morning. It was the next morning. And he just came with such a calming presence and um, just assured me that they were going to take care of everything, not to worry about anything. And I even tried to give them the money that my family had raised. And um, I think Mike just said, take care of your medical bills, take care of you. And it, 
was just like all the weight of four years had been lifted. Mm -hmm. And um, it's so important that we support Shirley's Way. I think immediately I started, you know, my $20 a week donation, which doesn't go a long way. But when you think of a local organization, if we can all do this, think of what we can do together. It's $1.50 a day to make a $20 a month donation. It comes out. You don't even know it. It's automatically done. There's never any problems with it. And then you can sit back and watch videos like this one with your family and saying, you know, we did this. Our family replaced that AC unit. Our family helped this lady buy groceries this week or buy the things that she needed to be comfortable. Yeah. And we're such Jefferson County, Louisville, Kentuckyana, it's a small area and there are a lot of people. I mean, if I can donate $20 a month with my medical debt, I think that any of us can do it and it makes a huge difference in a person's life. And I feel like when we extend love and kindness like that out into the world, it always comes back. Absolutely. I think tenfold. Be a for Shirley's <laughs> that was great. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for watching this. Um, Bright Mechanical, like we've said a hundred times, they're amazing people. So please, if you're needing any heating and air needs, reach out to Scott Wright and his team. And Holly, thank you so much for being here. Like she said, 17 years old, getting diagnosed with breast cancer. 10 years later, getting diagnosed with your... Um, what was the second oh, one? Oh, I had the mass on my ovaries. The mass on my ovaries. I mean, and then now in her 40s, and you're in remission, right? I am. I am. I just got clean scans, Yay. and um, I say I'm a 10-year survivor because it seems to be happening every 10 years. Oh, for you in 10 years then. So, um, but kindness is important, and Mike and Scott do amazing things for a lot of people in this area, and with cancer rates at one in five or one in three, depending where you live, someday it could be your family. And what are you gonna do then? You're gonna call Shirley's way. Yeah. We say that all the time. If we haven't helped you, then you're lucky. Right. And you don't wanna be in that situation. It's but true. We're glad we got to help you and I got to know you and your story. Thanks. And I'm so grateful that you're sharing it with everyone else. So. Make sure you all watch the rest of our videos and please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more of Shirley's talk. Thank you so much.